Hello, everyone. My name is Yukun. It's my pleasure to present our work, Uncertainty Aware Training of Neural Networks for Selective Medical Image Segmentation. Why we need to consider the uncertainty in the context of deep neural networks? The reason is that the real world problems are so diverse and have so many edge cases. In some critical tasks, such as medical image or robot control, it's extremely difficult to train a network to achieve a satisfactory accuracy. Therefore, we need a measure of confidence or uncertainty to help us identify and deal with the potential failure properly. The word uncertainty can be tricky because it can mean different things in different contexts. For example, when a model says there is a 30% of chance my prediction is wrong, then this 30% is uncertainty. However, in some cases, a model can make multiple predictions on the same input by Monte Carlo dropout or uh, image augmentation. Then the, then the disagreement between these multiple predictions is also a kind of uncertainty. So we want to make sure everyone is on the same page. In this work, the uncertainty is considered to be a scalar between zero and one that indicates the probability of the model's prediction is wrong. In the other way around, if you do one minus the uncertainty, it can be a confidence score that tells uh, how likely the prediction is correct. In this work, we consider a popular uncertainty estimation method called the softmax probability. We directly take the probability produced by the softmax layer and use one, uh, use one, one minus it as the uncertainty. This is a simple method but has competitive performance without any overhead. Another background is selective prediction. The figures give an illustration of how selective prediction works. In sub-figure A, we have human process the input and get the output manually. In sub-figure B, we have a deep neural network to do the work, but the accuracy is not high enough. So the human must check all outputs and make corrections when needed. In sub-figure C, we still have the model to do the work, but before the human step in, the data will be divided into two subsets based on the uncertainty score U. Because the data has low uncertainty, it already has higher accuracy. This part can be committed directly. Then human will only need to check and correct the high uncertainty subset. In this way, the overall cost can be reduced. Selective segmentation works in a similar way. The segmentation model will do the segmentation, but it will also indicate the area where the model is uncertain about. And then the radiologist will check these areas and finish the segmentation. Our motivation is that there is a discrepancy between how we train the network and how we use the network. If you look at the figure below, when we train the neural network, the model is trained to optimize the accuracy on all inputs. However, in the case of selective segmentation, only the prediction on the low uncertainty part is used. The prediction on the high uncertain part will be done only by human. Uh, this, this part will be done by human anyway, and the error here doesn't really matter. So practically, only the accuracy at the confidence, confident subset matters. We expect that if we can directly optimize for the practical target, it will pro still provide higher accuracy. Therefore, in this work, we want to find a way to bridge this gap. Here is a more formal definition of the problem. For each input x, the model output a, a prediction y hat and an uh, uncertainty score u. We define a correctness score s, and s is 1 if the prediction is correct, and s is 0 if the prediction is wrong. If we apply a threshold t on the uncertainty score u, we can divide the data into two subsets, xl, the low uncertainty subset, and xh, the high uncertain subset. Then the low uncertainty predictions can be used directly. And then the coverage of the model C is uh, defined as xl over x. Based on the above definition, the model's accuracy at the coverage C is per se C. In a special case where C equals to one, per se C becomes the uh, becomes per se one, which is the conventional accuracy 
at the whole data set. So we can see that Percel C is our practical target and Percel 1 is the training target. It is not clear how to optimize Percel C, but we know that Percel C depends on both the prediction quality and the uncertainty estimation quality. However, we have a lot of experience on uh, how to optimize our neural network for prediction, but we don't know that for uh, uncertainty. Since we hope the uncertainty score u equals the probability of the prediction is wrong, this is essentially a probabilistic prediction problem. So this can be analyzed in the framework of a scoring rule. A scoring rule is a quantified summary measure for the quality of probabilistic prediction. It's a proper scoring rule if the score is maximized when the predicted probability distribution matches the true distribution. It further becomes a strictly proper scoring rule if the score is maximized if and only if the predicted probability distribution matches the true distribution. Strictly proper scoring rules are often used as cost functions in uh, optimization problems. In the context of neural networks, it is the loss function. So it is known that the commonly used loss functions such as L2 loss or cross entropy are strictly proper scoring rule for uncertainty estimation. This is why the softmax probability can be a strong baseline for uncertainty estimation. So why do we discuss the scoring rule here? Our key observation is that for the uncertainty estimation, we do not need a strictly proper scoring rule that try to recover the actual probability distribution Q. The uncertainty score is only used to, to divide the data into two subsets, as we mentioned before. So we only want more correct predictions go to the low confidence subset and the more wrong predictions go to the high uncertainty subset. Even if we are considering all the possible coverage C, then only the relative ranking of the uncertainty score U matters, and we don't care about the specific value of U. Therefore, using a strictly proper scoring rule for uncertainty estimation is unnecessary and may hurt the real performance that we care about. So we are motivated to find a good optimization target for uncertainty estimation that is a strictly that is not a strictly proper scoring rule, but still help us in optimizing our practical target per se C. We denote the uncertainty target we found as gamma. The definition is below, but the meaning is quite simple. It is the percentage of the wrong predictions in the high uncertainty subset. Even though the definition is not complicated, we find that the gamma uh, we found has the, uh, several desired properties. First, it is the proper scoring rule for uncertainty estimation, but not a strictly proper scoring rule. The uh, proper scoring rule means that it will not prefer a bad prediction and uh, it has minimal conflict with the uh, optimization for uh, the prediction part which use a strictly proper scoring rule. It is not a strictly proper scoring rule means that it will avoid the redundant uh, objective of recovering the true distribution Q. Second, the practical target per se C is fully determined by process one and gamma. And the third one, the partial, we find that the partial derivative of process C with respect to process one and gamma are uh, always positive. It means that at any point in order to improve process C, we should uh, increase the process one and gamma. So it is uh, greatly help us in uh, setting up an uh, optimization framework. So it's now uh, it's become clear that finding the uh, optimal process C can be transformed to uh, finding a good shadow between process one and gamma. Then we propose to maximize process one and gamma simultaneously uh, in order to maximize process C. Compared to other possible formulation, the key advantage of this formulation uh, is that we are making minimal modification to the conventional optimization method where we only want to maximize per se one. Now we just add uh, one term for gamma. Now the question comes, 
how do we optimize gamma? Since gamma do not has uh, use do not have any useful gradient for the training of a neural network, we choose an approximation by an uncertainty loss. It is essentially a margin ranking loss that try to give the wrong prediction the higher uncertainty score than that of the correct predictions. In the paper, we have discussed some consistency between gamma and this uncertainty loss, but it is, it is still a pretty rough approximation to gamma. And um, a better approximation to gamma could be an interesting framework, uh, an interesting future work. So finally, this uncertainty loss is combined with the conventional segmentation loss. Uh, we use the, the curve entropy here, and this is designed to optimize the conventional accuracy uh, per set one. With the uh, weighted sum of these two laws, we are trying to optimize both per set one and gamma with a trade-off between them. As we just mentioned, this will help us getting an optimal per set C. Now let's look at the uh, experiment results. We did the experiment on one 3D segmentation task and one 2D segmentation task. The figures below are the best coverage curve, where the x-axis is the coverage C and the y-axis is the dice coefficient. We can see that with reduced coverage, the dice improved significantly. Meanwhile, our uncertainty array training can achieve higher dice coefficient than the baseline. Here is some quantitative results. The overall selective segmentation performance is measured by AURC, which is the area above the dice coverage curve. Due to the time limit, I will skip the details and you can find the detailed discussion in the paper. In summary, the results here confirm the lines uh, our method outperforms the baseline. These are some qualitative results. The finding is similar to that of quantitative results. We can see that the error is greatly reduced at the cost of coverage and our model has less error compared with the baseline. We also did the pre-image comparison with the baseline to better understand the effect of our method. In the figure below, each dot represents one image. The x-axis is the difference in the pre-image coverage, and the y-axis is the difference in the dice coefficient. The dots in the first quadrant means our method has, uh, is better in both coverage and dice. The dots in the third quadrant means the opposite. The number in each quadrant is the percentage of dots in the corresponding quadrants. So from this result, we can clearly see that uh, the performance is improved by our uncertainty aware training. Besides, with decreasing uh, average coverage, the pre-image coverage difference increases. This is a result of different uncertainty by different me uh, methods. Meanwhile, the pre-image dice difference decreases. This is because with lower coverage, most uncertain prediction is removed, and then the dice coefficient converges. The main limitation of this work is that we assume a pixel-wise selective segmentation. In practice, it is not efficient to leave the individual pixels for radiologists to level. Uh, it would be more desired to have image-wise selective, uh, selective segmentation. The challenge of doing that is we will need an image-wise uncertainty measure instead of a pixel-wise uncertainty measure. And also the uncertainty-aware training will uh, become difficult because we, uh, in order to do the image-wise uh, compare, then we need to put these uh, images in the memory and this will clearly subject to the memory subject to the available memory. So another limitation is we only need uh, well currently we only use an approximation to gamma in our training. Gamma is uh, is proven to be a good target but the uncertainty loss is not as we mentioned earlier it is likely that there are some better approximation to gamma that can potentially get better results. That's it. Thank you for listening.